You don't need a worldwide government to have an epidemic. But some of the things that are going to happen will happen under one ruler. One ruler. You know, and all the other will serve almost like his cabinet. But we are in preliminary, you know, stages. The main event is yet to come. The main thing is yet to happen. Amen. Amen. So, praise the Lord. Thank you, sir. Praise the Lord. So at this time, just going to conclude our adult Sunday school lesson. Thank all of you for participating. And who got turned this to pastor? I have no idea. <laughs> well, whoever the Sunday school session is at this time is over. Let's stand and give God a high praise. Hallelujah. Lord, we thank you. We thank you. Thank you for your presence. Thank you for your anointing. Oh, God. We humbly, Abasa, bow in your presence, oh, Lord. Holy Spirit, you're welcome in this place. Anointing of God, you're welcome in this place. Anointing of worship and praise. You welcome in this place. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We give your name the praise, the glory, and the honor. Hallelujah. Let's continue to sing unto the Lord and praise and praise God. Sing praises to the King. Oh. 
thank you, Lord, but you because you brought us here, Lord. You brought us to hear your word to be in your presence, Lord. We give you the honor and the glory, hallelujah. And oh God, we thank you, Lord. Amen. Amen. Let's stand for the reading of the word. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Psalms 113 says, Praise ye the Lord. Praise all you servants of the Lord. Praise his name. Praise the name of the Lord. Blessed be the name of the Lord from this time forth and forevermore. From the rising of the sun until the going down of the same. The Lord's name is to be praised. The Lord is high above all the nations and his glory above all the heavens. Who is like unto the Lord our God, who dwelleth on high, who humbles himself to behold the things that are in heaven and that are in earth? I have read to you Psalms 113, 1 through 8. May God have a blessing to the reading of his word. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. I will sing hallelujah. I will sing, O oh Lord. Hallelujah. I will sing, Hallelujah, O oh Lord. For you are the source of my supply. Lord, I praise and I lift you high. Hallelujah. I will sing, Hallelujah, O oh Lord. Come on, choir. Let's sing unto the Lord. Hallelujah.
our Lord. How excellent is your name. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Praise the Lord. And I'm going to ask everyone who's in the pulpit but one person. Elder Sockwell, if everybody would leave the pulpit except Elder Sockwell and the musicians. Amen. While you're praising the Lord, you're doing this. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Yes, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. I need a little more volume. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Is anybody up there that know how to give me a little bite? He's coming. He's coming. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord, oh God. We just love you. Thank you, God. Thank you for gracing us with your presence. Thank you, God. For in your presence there is, not there was, but there is. Amen. Yes, God. Uncountable joy. Thank Bless you, God. you. Yes, we want to thank you for it. In the mighty name of Jesus. Yes, Lord Jesus. Everybody say amen. amen. I'm going to be in Psalms. Praise the Lord. <clears throat> and it's something, some things I'm going to recapitulate on. And uh, there's some things I'm going to tentatively deal with. Amen. Then we're going to hit home without message. Hallelujah. Um, praise the Lord. I said to the Lord, if He give me enough strength to stand, I'll preach. And He did it. I've been working, doing physical work. Oh, someone holler, Jesus. You're going to be happy. Jesus, thank you. Amen. We have some very important days ahead of us, at least we deem them to be important. And, uh, but I seem to be ordinarily given to the times that are at hand. I'm perplexed, burdened, and worried about those of you who are not cognizant of the hour that in which we live. You're so nonchalant, uncaring, and it bothers me. Amen. I'm going to call your attention to the book of Psalms, and that's going to be the first chapter. Amen. <clears throat> and Apostle Sartwell is going to commence reading for me. And I want to start in the very first verse where it says, Blessed and happy. I'm in the Amplified Bible. Okay? And, uh, but what version do you have, Dr? King James. King James. So you're going to read it out of that. Blessed. I, I can take it either way. Amen. Blessed is the man that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly. Now, you are blessed if you have spiritual sense enough not to take bad advice. Because some of us are so uninformed until any counsel coming from any body we tend to take. But the writer here is saying it is a blessing to be able to discern and to know the difference between good and bad counsel. So he says, blessed is the man who walketh, who don't let people direct you, tell you how to run your life, and it's bad comes. So it's a blessing. Blessed is the man 
who walketh not in the counsel of evil advice. You're not under the authority of someone who is a witch. You're not listening to someone who read palms. You're not going to a root worker or a soothsayer. You have not turned your life over to these people. Amen. Expecting for them to tell you where your husband at. Where your wife at. And am I going to New York this year? But blessed is a man that trusts in God yeah. and do good. Yeah. Amen. Amen. That even when God is not speaking, trust him, wait on him. Yeah. And when he's not coming to you, go to him. If he's not looking for you, look for him. God is not off limits. He's available when we are unavailable. Much of the dilemmas and much of what has befallen us has come from us because of us. Amen. Yet we choose to blame God. You have not answered my prayers. You have not heard my cry. This is a sad day. Because the greatest evil that has ever fallen upon the world has been announced upon this last generation. And it doesn't seem to phase us. That way back then, when they was far away from it, they tightened up and they feared because they thought it was coming the next day. And with us, it is the next day. And by the shed, they shall be given in marriage, you know, seeking careers and so forth when he comes. But that's not particularly what I want to teach you. Amen. Go on, read that. Nor stand it in the way of sinners. Nor stand it in the way. Blessed is the man who walked not in the counsel of the ungodly. Because he will wind up standing in the way of sinners. That's the way that's you. That if you've been taking evil advice, you're going to stand in the way of your unsaved children. It doesn't matter what that un unsavory advice is coming from. It could be coming from a lawyer. It doesn't matter who it's coming from. Amen. But somebody that you rely upon and they order your footsteps, your movement. Amen. So pretty much what you do, no matter where you are, is under the dictates of a particular voice. It could be your own voice. You could be talking to yourself. Okay. And I meet a lot of people now that's full of themselves. They don't listen to nobody. Praise the Lord. Read on. Nor sit it in the seat of the scorn. Nor sit it in the seat of the scorn. But his delight. And there are people that wish that what has come on them would come on everybody. This is where I am. This is where I'm located. And I wish he was as unblessed as I am. Thank you, Jesus. Go ahead. But. But, verse 2, but his delight is in the law of the Lord. But his delight is in the word of God. Yeah. He's trusting in God no matter what he or she is going through. There's always that high peak of hope because I have the word. Yeah. When everything has left me and forsaken me. And there are things that I depended on I can no longer depend on. I got the word of God. Yeah. And if I got the word of God, I got God inside of me. Yeah. Somebody say amen. Yeah. So I'm not fretting. I'm not worried. I'm going to stand still and see the salvation of God. Yeah. I know he lives because he lives inside of me. And he's holding the rain. Why, I don't know what I'd do if it wasn't for him. I don't know where I'd be if it wasn't for him. I don't know what I'd say to some of these people that get on my nerves. It's good and when it's not good. When I can't see my way, 
in the darkness of the night, I'm still trusting in the Lord. I'm leaning on Him. Say yes. I'm touching Him and He's touching me. I'm going to be all right. Amen. We meditate in the Word. I don't allow the nighttime to distract me from the Word. And no matter how bright it gets, I'm not trusting in nature. I'm trusting in God. Yes, I am. Read from it. And he shall be like a tree. Planted. And he shall be like a tree. Planted by the, planted rivers, of by the rivers of water. And, 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 and that's what I want to teach y'all. So I got to get myself down and get myself together. What I want to teach y'all. And I want to just take a text. Be like a tree. Now we got into some things. And I, I didn't quite finish them. But we were talking about the God of botany coming down and planting a tree. And he says to us, be like that tree. And so we're going to read what that tree is like, some of the characteristics of the tree. And then I'm going to teach you a little bit. Is that all right? So read with us and let's look at the characteristics of the tree. That there is something in what God had planted, he wants us to be like. Now, he never wants us to be like what's placed. Because <coughs> anything placed can be removed. Because it has no roots, no stability. I place this Bible here. And I can move it very easily. Yeah. Definitely if I glue it here or nail it here or screw it down, pass it down. So he said, be like a tree that's planted. Uh -huh. Don't model your life after wish-washy people. Yeah. Lord, y'all ain't going to let me teach. Don't model your life at, after people who are not faithful in their commitment to Jesus Christ. Don't want to be like them. Don't hang out with them. But be like the tree that's planted. So he liked the idea that that tree is not everywhere. Because when the husband man comes to work on that tree, that tree down the street, he don't know where it is. But one of the things that the husband man can depend on is that where that tree was yesterday is going to be tomorrow. And the day. Now some Christians you have to look for. You plan them one place. You situate them one place. You ordain them and anoint them in a place. And you look there somewhere else. And there he is. And it's pruning time. And you're somewhere else. It's fertilizing time. It's time to dig around the roots. And you are somewhere else. And so it's difficult to keep the tree healthy. When the time that the tree picked to be absent from the place it ought to be in. Robs the husband man of the opportunity to serve it. And there's some not here this morning I need to be serving. But people think it is that their delegated authority and right to say. I ain't coming to church because I don't feel good in the times that I do. I don't want to be like that. I'm so glad that I'm under supervision. You see, let me talk about that. Can I teach you this morning? The tree does not know it's an apple tree. The tree does not know it's a pecan tree. The tree does not know it's a peach tree. Amen. Amen. Only the person that sold it know what it is. Yeah. <laughs> Come on, give God some praise. <laughs> the tree does not know its identity. Only the person that sold the seed. 
the Spirit. That Jesus Christ himself is the tree of life and he's highly productive. He gives gifts, but he produces fruit. And if you were a fruit, so we're going to do a Bible, a little Bible thing here. We're going to Galatians. Y'all mind? So we're going to the book of Galatians, and we're going there to find out your fruit. Because if we find your fruit, we're going to go on your tree. Because the tree is known by the fruit it bears. So we're going to find out what kind of fruit you got in your life, so we'll know what you bear. Somebody give God a praise. Five twenty-two, Galatians five twenty-two. Read, my brother. But the fruit of the spirit is love. Uh oh. Joy. Wait, wait. What you doing? You want to let me teach? But the fruit of the Spirit, the fruit that the Spirit bear in you first and foremost, before any other fruit is love. Because the law was not given to you, it was given to the nation of Israel. Love was given to you, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. But if you love me, you won't kill me. If you love me, you won't mess with my wife. All right. If you love me, you won't lie to me. So he said the Ten Commandments all hinge on the one love. Love you one another. Love the Lord with all thine heart. So that's the first truth. Don't even try to go nowhere else until you deal with love. I, you know what I want to decide to do over here? Then I'm going to get to this side. Look in your basket. We got to put a fruit basket together here. It would be a shame if y'all sent somebody that fruit basket and wasn't nothing but the basket. I'm not going to ask you how many of y'all love. I ain't buying into that this morning. Because it tells you the characteristics of love. Love is not hate. It's not dissimulation. Huh? Love is not murder. Love is not competitive. Love is not hating on anybody. Love is not being impartial. Discriminatory. Love is not argumentative and fault finding. Love is kind. Love is God. Love is merciful. Love is forgiving. God is love. The Bible says, for God is love. So don't love the world. What he's saying is don't love the God of this world because he imitates God. So many serve the God of this world and they operate in his spirit and they call it love. I love it, but I don't want to see you no more. So look in your mask. I'm talking about agape love. I'm not talking about filio, guru. I'm talking about agape love. Loving me like God loves me. You can't love me like your mama. She don't make me, baby, I can't stand that nigga. <laughs> you can't love me like your cousin or your sister. Some of you are married to Men, women who don't love your God, don't love the church, don't love your form of worship. You got to have an agape love. You got to love them in their ignorance and stupidity. And if you love God, he will provide you with the love you need to love one another. Ain't nobody talking to him. You ain't got to talk, just look at your best. Love is kind. Love is generous. Love is forgiven. Amen. Love don't hold grudges. Love is not revengeful. 
Hallelujah. Love is God. For God so loved. He was constrained by his love that he died in Christ that you and I might live in him. Amen. Love not the world, neither the things that are in the world. Peter loved and sound me more than all of these. Yea, Lord, if you love me, feed my sheep. Don't be impartial. Love everybody. Shepherd everybody. Pastor everybody. I'm not going to ask you if you have love. Because nobody wants to announce they don't have it. So you're going to get everybody raising their hand. Because you can, you can stand up before a group of people and say, All right, I got a lot of food here. Anybody that hasn't eaten can eat. And you can have half the people who've already eaten. You could eat here or take it away. And I want $20. Well, the ones that have already eaten, say, I've already eaten. I ain't got to pay it, but I've already eaten. But if you say it's free. <laughs> He don't want to say, well, I've already, I'm not going to go up there and get it. Somebody doesn't need to get it at me. Love is considerate. Love is kind. Love suffers. Love is charity. Charity is God. God is love. So I don't know how many of you had that fruit, but hold on, I got a ways to go. Go ahead. <clears throat> joy. My joy I give you. Mm -hmm. Y'all know I know about that joy. I would know if you had joy. So you raise your hand, I give it. Where do y'all have the joy at? Y'all must go to State Park. Because joy is not inhibited by circumstances or conditions. Because joy is not based on people, places, or things. Joy is a gift from God. So it can't be removed. It's not subject to the troubles and the things that you're going through. It can't take your joy away. Because your joy does not come through and by circumstances. It's not a joy that works when you are feeling well. It's a joy that I say all the time, whether in sorrow or whatever else. This joy that I have, the world can't take it away. The world didn't give it, and the world can't take it. Look at your basket and see if you have joy. Lord, I want to preach on these, but I got some other going. Look at that and see if you got joy. Ooh, I want somebody to raise your hand that I know. You raise your hand. I know you would. Happiness is based on people, places, and things, and some of you confuse happiness with you. Happiness is based on things. You have it because you got this, that, and the other. But joy is an eternal gift that's given to God. Water can't drown, and fire can't burn, and sand can't smother, and jail can't hold. I, I got joy. Not to say you got cancer. No, I got joy. Hmm. Dr. Six said today, I got joy. It can't be smarter. That's why he gave it to me. So that when I come into times like these, it is that precious fruit that makes me know that he's with me because it's his joy and he's never far from what he owns. He's never far from his possession. And joy belongs to him and I belong to him. So we got two fruits. I think I'm going to take a chance. Everybody got joy? Raise their hand. I want to see you. Yes, yes. You can put them down now. You can put them down. Now. What's the next fruit? 
peace. Listen out of peace. I don't like him. I don't like her. I don't like that. That's my seat. I want you to know that shit you shit don't have to be a bitch. Peace lady. Don't say that about her. Don't say that about him. Are you a peacemaker? Well, you have to be at peace to be a peacemaker. Amen. You can't give something you don't have. Amen. He said, my joy, I give you. My peace, I give you. None of these attributes as the world did. When you have the peace of God, you're quiet. You don't let shortage and famine and sudden accidents and sudden death disturb you. <laughs> Not only do you have peace, you're quiet. Yeah. Another attribute that belongs to, a word that belongs to peace is you're still. Mm. David said, the Lord leadeth me beside still waters, quiet waters, yeah. peaceful waters. I am so relaxed. Had I known this, I would have allowed him to lead me a long time ago. And not be led by my own mind and by the so-called close friends. <clears throat> I'm quiet. You can't disturb my peace. The doctors can't disturb me. Can't be disturbed. Disappointment cannot disturb me. I wanted the house, but I don't get it. God's got a will. Shoot, I kind of wanted the woman. I wanted the wife of a shoot. Thy will be done. Because if you don't have peace, you may not come to church anymore. Oh, you don't want me to talk. And if you don't have peace, you may not sing in the choir anymore. When you don't have peace, you're destructive and disruptive and noisy. Like sometimes when I'm teaching and preaching, people in the auditorium talk. See, I don't know that I go there and slap somebody. <laughs> Go ahead on. Let's peace. I said, leave my peace. Joy, y'all wait right here. Right now. <laughs> but that's ridiculous. Let me go and preach the word. I don't accept it. I don't believe it. Did you look in your basket? When somebody comes to you and says, she's talking about you, you're going to need peace. <laughs> Don't you gonna raise hell? Amen. Huh? Amen. I'm not bragging, but I have a deep saddle beach. They have come to me and say, your boy this, your grandchildren in jail. This person's been shot. I sat with my crawl, legs crossed, and I dropped my head, and I said, thank you, Father. First, I'm thinking that I'm not moved by this. He said, the word is working in me. That's the word's job. When I accept the word, the word works in me to stable me so that I'm not blown and tossed to and fro with every wind that dies. Satan rises in the storm to mess you up. You've got to be calm. And Jesus was asleep yeah. on the high in the part of the ship yeah. and found him a pillar laying down sleeping. Yeah. 
peace. I was telling my mother in the Lord, and I started telling her things that I perceived and sensed was going to come on me. And what I was telling she was doing, man. And I started becoming confused in my telling her. I mean, I lost the desire to finish. So she was doing that. I was telling her, and this here, and this, and this, and this, and this is going to happen to you. No, it's not. She was talking inside. No, it's not. No, it's not. Shaking in that kind of power. You giving him some stuff. You can be able to go upside your head if it wasn't using your hand. So I, I definitely hope you have that peace because you can weather the storms of bad news. People that lose their peace start cussing. Yep. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. We can deal with it. They don't speak it. They try to let. They try to let it off. Two saints in the house calling each other the son of a gun. You're another one. They ain't happy just to stay with each other. How about your mama? Your dad? Then they come to the church and you hear them, they say, ha, ha. Ha 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 because Satan is more than what you can have. He sends the rain to create the flood. He digs a hole to hold the flood he created. Has he been digging at you? Digging in you? You found yourself with a big hole. He's getting ready to fill it with a river. So that out of your belly will flow the issues of life. God, who am I talking to here? Look at your basket. Is it there? All right. As to me, come on. Long suffering. Long suffering. How connected peace is with long suffering. Suffer long. You're quiet and peaceful. As God designed what is needed to mature you. And one of the reasons why you have to be patient and have peace when God's working. Because God is working in time. He's not working where there is no time. See, you used to be in a timeless zone and you fell into a time zone. So God is working with you where you at. And it takes time now. Holiness is in time. Holiness is not in heaven. Holiness is not around the throne of God. Holiness for you is in time. It takes time to live holy. And God is helping you to utilize time. To, your time is in his hand. Don't waste it. Your time is in his hand. And he's going to use that time to introduce you to holiness. His nature. He's going to use that time to introduce you to his nature. His spirit. His word. You're going to walk in his way. And you won't be afraid. People, some of y'all got a song afraid to say. A word afraid to speak a testimony afraid to tell it. That spirit was not given by God. He's not given us a spirit of fear, but of love and of power. And of a solid man. Long suffering. 
patience to wait on God. It's not, it's not talking about being patient with the cancer, being patient with the diabetes, being patient with whatever. It's talking about being patient with God who said what he said. Concerning you and concerning what you're going through. That's where your peace comes from. Taking him at his word. Resting in his word. Oh, I, I remember what he said. So I can suffer long. There's no end to my suffering when I know him. There's no end to my suffering. I can tell him as long as it takes. How long, long does it take to win me, to humble me, to fix me, to shape me, to form me, take all the time you need. Because I need what you have for me. I want my blessing now. I want my anointing now. I want my ministry now. I want my money now. I want my woman now. I want my man now. There's some people you can't be a husband to if you haven't suffered. Because if you haven't suffered, you're going to suffer. <laughs> I'm going home. <laughs> suffer now or later. The Lord's got to work long suffering to you. Anybody that's married to a man got to know long suffering. Amen. Any man married to a woman got to know long suffering. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Women go through changes men don't go through. Yeah. Amen. You leave, she happy, kiss him, kiss him on your ear, your nose. You come back in, she got a rolling pin in her hand. What the heck happened? I'm not you know women, I'm complimenting you. Women are many things. Amen. They go through stuff men don't even go through. And required. Emotionally, physically, mentally. Yes, sir. That man be looking at him like, hey, what is it now? Uh. <laughs> Women have this thing with clothes and spirit. Yeah. <laughs> just come in and take a wet rag and wash his bedrooms off. <laughs> wash his dirt off the dinner and say, shoot, I can wear this. Ain't nobody looking at my knees and stuff. You just go into a recital. I ain't got to change. The woman look at him and says, God save. Take the mistaken things off. <laughs> Suffering. And those who have suffered or suffered, mm-hmm. you're not suffering now. And people talk about you. Right. How come that didn't move her? How come she's steadfast? Can I tell y'all something? I want you to listen very carefully to me. I stayed with my children almost all the time. Took my boys on revival with me, David and Benny. Because if God bless you to have four children, and you thank him for it, they're not going to be depressed. It's a hell of a thing when you have a newborn boy and you aggravated with him already. And he don't even know his name. The little thing ain't but three weeks old. And he tell me, you get on my neck. 
I'd be glad when you grow up. That's a hell of a thing. You won't put more in you than you even bet. If you're a child of God, you may as well wait for those children. My children was never depressing. It was always a joy. We did things with the pots, fish together. When I wanted to do a job, I took them with me. I ain't need no babysitters. I took them shopping, picked out the clothes. I took them to the laundry mat. Well, I sent them to them, right? Give me that. I'm your dirty drawer. Get them. Bring it. The mama was at home practicing how to further poison us. We get dirty recipes. No. Y'all come on, I bet you can't guess what I cook. I look and I say, you're right, I can't guess. It look like macaroni, but it ain't. It like corn, but it ain't. It look like mush, I believe that's what it is. And I got down and prayed, I said, Lord, don't let all of us wake up dead. And her key word was, when she cooked some of the worst food on the planet and we didn't eat it, Sonny, y'all got the devil in you. That's the devil that don't like good food. And you got your children following you. They got the devil in them too. Ain't nothing wrong with good food. I'll eat my own food. And they say, I know it's in the garden. Oh no, you was going to eat it. No, you want to poison us. Long suffering. Yeah. <laughs> Allowing your wife to come into her own, your husband, your children. Long suffering. Yeah. I loved all my kids. I kind of hated that they grew up. Because I loved that babyish look, babyish way. When I was a preacher, I couldn't wait to get back. We was on the floor, playing with them, kisses on them, hugging them. I kissed all my boys, even when they grown to kiss them, till they got on out there. I had very lovable, cute kids. Love taking them out and chew them off. Anytime I saw a crowd, I pushed them right in the crowd. <laughs> Pride on my seat. The only person we put in the nursery was just kids. We just left them there. <laughs> Hello. How are you? Who are you looking for? You looking for your goddaddy? Is he up here? Granddaddy down there. God bless you, man. You really dress nice. You need to take a lot of pictures of you. Mm -hmm. Y'all give the Lord a hand for the baby. <laughs> Suffering law. Hmm. Another word for suffering long is birth pain. Say birth pain. Birth pain. Because if you suffer long, you're going to produce something. You're going to have something. Because you have patience. An impatient person never gets anywhere. Never own anything, never pay anything off. And while they're paying off, they're fretful, they're anxious. And they start growing old and ugly. I know that's going to help some of the women. They're going to quit that. But women don't want to be old and ugly. No, don't. Look at that on in there. All right, bro. When you have peace, you go through, you suffer long, you stay cute, you stay pretty, you stay handsome. Those other things will otherize you, depress you. Now, let me tell you a good sign and I'm gonna leave that fruit. That's four fruit. If you go look in the mirror, look in your, 
Go look in the mirror mm -hmm. and look in your eyes for five minutes. Mm -hmm. If you don't see nothing there, say, all right. If you start getting said you want to do like that. <laughs> you know that that fruit has not been developed. It's true. Because a tree ain't going to show a fruit it does not have. Yeah. Give God the praise. Man, I'm yeah. you yeah. Let's go to the next one. Gentleness. Gentleness. Being gentle, soft. Being gentle, soft. Kind. And treat people easily, easily and treat. I had a man to tell me years ago, he was trying to describe his wife. He said, she's gentle. I couldn't imagine. I tried to go back and look at my mother. My mother was everything but you. She jacked my dad up by the collar, jacked me up by the collar. I tried to find gentleness in my mother. My mom wasn't gentle. Oh, gentle, mm -hmm. gentle. She's dangerous. <laughs> Hmm. She didn't make threats she couldn't keep. <laughs> she said, I'm gonna knock the head off. You can look at the head. You look at the head. She went right at it. So she would not be a false prophet. <laughs> I said, What do you mean? Gentlemen. He said, She's not jealous or suspicious. I don't have to explain when I come in two hours late from work. She meets me and hugs me and holds me until sometimes I'm ashamed. I'm guilty sometimes until I got tired of that and I stopped doing what I was doing so that the gentleness that immunated from her would have a more positive effect on me. She never denied me because she thought I was bad. You ain't getting in this bed tonight. And then in fact, you're gonna take this queen bed out of here and put some twin beds in it. You're gonna be in your own bed. I'll be on that sofa. And you go into some people's houses. The furniture is new, all but the soap. The soap is more. And they ain't got no dog or nothing. Why the soap is more? You know about it here, but the couple, you and the man, in there, oh yeah, I know what it's going on. That's where you sleep the most of the time. Gentle. Even though they know what you are, know what you've done. You can sit down and tell a lie. And they're so gentle, you think they are fool. You think. I said gentle, not stupid. All right. You think they're fool. You can't make a difference without the fruit of the Spirit. You can't make a difference by taking on the fruits of the flesh and getting mad and raising hell. Somebody got to save relationships. Somebody got to save marriages. Somebody got to save their husband. Somebody got to save their wife. Somebody got to save their children. And a very positive fruit is gentleness. And gentleness derives its softness from the words that it picked. During turbulent times, like babies, we are. It's going to be okay, dog. Calm yourself. I love you so much. That's how I love you, anyhow. Yeah. yeah, no, nigga. No, 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 no. Took me out to the restaurant, but you were looking at that woman. Where was that? 
I saw you. His principles, his character, his spirit. Your association with the spiritual of God produces you as a spirit person. Association brings on that simulation. If you associate with him, you're going to be like him. And you're going to be good. Now, goodness don't mean spoil you. Goodness don't mean let the man have his way and the woman have his way. Amen. What goodness means that whatever decisions you make, whatever you say, whatever you do, wherever you go, you're pure in it. Right. There's no hidden agenda. You're not mean. You're not revengeful. The man asks for beef stew and you go get an alpo dog from him. <laughs> <laughs> he more enough, more some more. Oh, man. Hey, you're a dog, I'm going to give you a dog too. That's a real thing. Good one. It's a powerful thing when a man says behind his wife's back, my wife is good. She's good. What does that mean? She's not letting me have my way. She's not condoning my malicious way. But she gives righteous judgment. She stays calm and cool. She stays centered with God. She's not threatening. She's not revengeful. She's good. She's honest. She's open. You're hurting me. I love you, but you're hurting me. Do you want to hurt me? Try to do everything you can to stop hurting me. I love you. You want some dinner now? You want some tea or something? Going right to goodness. Staying in goodness. Staying in righteousness. Staying in faith. Staying in the word. Ah! Glory to God. 
because he's the only help I have. So I'm going to stay in his mannerisms. Come on, I'm going to stay in his biblical intelligence because that's where stuff going to happen for me. And they'll learn to say in my behalf. Immediately and speedily. Is the opposite of people being mean. Mean people will never be converted by living Because you're two of a kind. And Satan can't convert Satan. You gotta be something different to make a difference. Somebody acting a fool and you act a fool, that's two fools. That's not one fool and one wise person. going to be good at okay, good woman. Right. That's right. Can't live up to it. No outside love. No outside man yeah. can touch a man that's good to you. Yeah. Doesn't mean that you go to Disney World every time you jump on one. Goodness is to sit down. Let's reason again. Yeah. Is this going to benefit us or damage us? Some people say that's stress relief. I mean, that ain't no stress relief. This world ain't no stress relief. God know. If it relieves stress, half of the world would be there. It's an entertainment center. And after you've done it two or three times, it, it, it doesn't reach the same level. Amen. Nothing. That's made by humans can satisfy human law. Yeah. We get used to it too quick. Because right. I'm familiar. Yep. And I've yep. already been there. I've already done that. I've already eaten this. And I just don't know what I'm going to cook. I don't know what I'm going to wear. Amen. I don't know. Because humans get fed up with stuff quick. You say, well, I don't. I say humans. <laughs> Read from me. Faith. Faith. Faith is the most powerful attribute that a saint can possess because faith creates. Faith puts back what's missing. Faith does what no other power can do. Faith. A creative energy in your basket. The same people, that's not going to happen. You're going to be all right. Thank them about hearing the word. In order for something to happen in some of y'all's life, somebody's got to speak a word that brings faith. You got to read a word with understanding, speak a word. You got to hear a word before faith will come. Amen. Faith does not come unannounced. Amen. The word announced faith. Amen. Give me the next. Meekness. Meek. Hmm. Meek means to surrender. I ain't gonna keep arguing. You know. You know. <laughs> what you call me? You know. Say it again. No, you say it again. Your long hair said, your hair. Surrender. Let them win. There's no prize. There's no trophy to honor. There's no W. You just wear yourself out. Somebody's got to be the champion of that relationship. It's said, for God's sake, amen. amen. Yeah. Yeah. 
Read it again. Meekness. Meek. Because if you're meek, you discover like anyone who surrenders to the mountains, discover gold, the sea, discover pearl, oil. It's beneficial to be meek. The meek shall inherit the earth. You don't need to be belligerent, quick tempered, and ill patient, and ill mannered. There are no trophies, no rewards, there are no payoffs for these things. They are all the fruits of the flesh that profit none. Go ahead. Temperance. Temperance. Praise the Lord. I want to use a word that everybody can understand. Balance. Okay. And few of us are balanced. So you can't use temperance. Because when you came into the church, you came and brought all your mess in. You never got rid of it. You brought what Mama said, what Shady said, Adam said. Did you say Shady? And what your first husband said. <laughs> you got too many of what everybody said. <laughs> Hallelujah. That's that brother from Africa. He calls me. Oh, that's that's me. Right. Hey, if you're looking at me. I know, right? I just tell the people you call me five times a day. Thank you, Jesus. I don't know whether he wants me to come there or he wants to come here. Five times a day, come. I turn him over to the secretary. Call me three more times after he talked to her twice. I'm feeling the praise of God. Let's go to the next one. It's nine a minute. That was it, Mr. That was it. Let's give God a praise for that. Stand on your feet and give God a praise. Now, I want to settle in and I want this cool bit removed. I'm going to come into my, you may be seated, into my real purpose for coming. Come, let's move the pool bit. Come on, brother, come in here. Thank you, Jesus. Anybody know how to cut that off? And I need a chair here to be a small one. Amen. Hello? Small chair. <laughs> yeah. Amen. Give God some more praise. <laughs> hey! I see y'all. Y'all see me? tree. Say a tree. a tree. And that tree consists of branches, limbs, stems, leaves, and fruit. Not to mention the bark, the root, and the wood material itself. When I look at the tree, I look at relationships. Somebody said relationship. And there are some of us who have no relationship. You have whole relationship. It ain't nobody but your husband and your children. Let me, let me deal with that group first. It's impossible. It's totally impossible for you to know any kind of peace. Can I show you why? Because here God plants a great big tree and ain't no fruit on it but the daddy fruit the mama fruit and the two children fruit or the three or four children big old tree with many limbs and many branches but limited in numbers let me show you a present danger if a woman only friend is her husband, it produces jealousy. Because if her husband is her only friend, she becomes possessive of him. See, that's why I want to say that. I don't even want to get knocked down. If the sun set and rise just on your husband or your wife, 
neither one is going to grow. You become possessors of one another. You, you better be in here by 12. You better be in here by 10. And the mess hit the fan. Where you been? Who is she? Who is him? God wants the tree loaded with more fruit. Why in the world would God sow a great big tree and ain't no one apple hanging on it? Well, I just by myself. I don't need nobody else in my relationship, child. I just got peace. I don't want them devils in my life. He is in your life. For the words that forsake not to assemble yourself together. Love one another. Develop a walk. Relationship is essential. There are some attacks that Satan is successful with on your body, your mind, because you don't have certain relationships in your life. <laughs> and, and it's got to extend beyond your family. We put up with family, you know, they discuss us. You got to have a friend. You need pastoral friendship. You need ministerial friendship. You need female, other females of the church. You need relationships. The tree needs to have more apples. God never intended for the tree not to be full of fruit. And I watched some of you for years. You ain't got nobody but you and your husband and your children. And they done grow up and ain't nobody but y'all. Mickey Mouse and Minnie Mouse. <laughs> ain't nobody in the house eating. Y'all eat all the dinner in your own house. All the bread. Y'all eating up all the food. In your own one house. Ain't nobody eating none of the chicken or nothing. Go to the market. Don't give me two pieces. Get one. A man that makes his wife his possession and his best friend and no other friend is in danger because he's possessive. She can't move. When you have a lot of friends and you're loving and you're kind, you help work things out of each other's lives and you prepare one another to be extensive, your spirits become free. Amen. I have people that have left this church because I I relate with other people. They won't mold me to just their type. That ain't about to happen. Mm -hmm. I'm a people's person. All right. I love people. Yes, I tell people, don't be getting close hanging around me all the time blocking other women from getting around me. Excuse me. Move. Let my two sisters in. Move. My brother. Some people want to dominate your life. Control. And that breeds negative at attribute. Let me hear him get home with my wife. That ain't no marriage. That's a time bomb. It's going to explode. Because can't nobody walk that chalk line like that. There are other essentials and other things that will arrive in your life unexpectedly. Stuff you're not even looking for. You, 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 you can't. You have to make allowances for later because you wouldn't expect them for it to happen. Say amen. amen. You should have a bunch of men and women and children in your life. Now the sower who sowed the seed that later became a tree, that was his overall intent. That's why he said be like a tree that's planted by the rivers of water. That bringing forth its fruit in its season. He wants the tree to be fruitful. He wants the tree to multiply. 
Same command he gave Adam, who was a tree type. Multiply, have friends, association. If some of you that I know had friends, we'd have to put our chairs in this chair. But you don't talk to nobody, but you're cheering. And your, your, your sons and daughters, and most of them that left you, they at the house, they married. They know what to do when they get somebody. Hmm. They leave you. And when they come back, they're coming back to bring the children. That's true. <laughs> They ain't coming back to spend the night. They come back to show you babysit. Ask me how I know. Yeah. Amen. Relationship, I'm closing. Relationship is important. The sower shows seeds. And he expects it, it's not choked. If there's no thorns and this is the sun that can burn it up, then it becomes highly productive because the seed is good. There's nothing wrong with the seed. There's something wrong with the soil. And it grows up first as tender plant, so it has to be treated differently. And then it becomes a tremendous branch, a tremendous tree, and it provides not just fruit, but it provides shade and comfort. Amen. And the apple tree does not know it's an apple tree. And for many of you, it does not yet appear what you're going to be. But you know that when you appear, when it is revealed, you're going to be very much like him. And Jesus was a people person. Yeah. And I'm telling you, New Covenant, your problem is you're anti-social. Oops. And the only time you associate with members is when you come to church. And the leaders don't associate with anybody, no member. They're null and void. They don't know about your sickness, your problems, no death, they don't know nothing. Just putting on backward and frontward cars. They have no knowledge of your plight, your plan, your plane, no knowledge. Now I know. I had somebody run in my body. I don't go in everybody's house. I go in everybody's house. And I assign people to contact people to see if it's clear for you to let me come in. Because there are people that will let you into their house anytime, but not me. Because they want their house to be in a certain order. That's the respect they show me. They ain't thinking about you. Come on in. There are certain people they don't want around if I'm coming there to pray. Right. And so some, you know, people say, well, pastors didn't go here, pastors didn't go there. I don't go to anybody's house without setting up an appointment. Because when I go to people's house, what I see there, when I leave there, I leave them there. I don't meddle in people's business. I got God children. Married now, I call and say, it's time for me to come to your house. You ain't gonna invite me, time for me to come. And I go over. And spend some time. I spend time in Shannon's house. I set up the appointment. Scores of people. I've never been an anti-social pastor. Always been involved with the people. I also announce I want people to make Open doors for me to go into people's houses. Remember? Bring them into your family so you can invite the people next door into your house. That never materialized. And you got to remember that I have what's called extended arms, circle of fire, and tender love and care. I created these to be an intermediary person for me between you, me, and you so that I can know what's going on if at all it's possible for me to come to you or you to come to me. Amen. Amen. And if somebody's not here and you hear say, well, pastor didn't come to my house, you need to ask me before you listen to me. Because I've been turned down to come in and some people's house because they got boyfriends. 
And the boyfriend was more beneficial being there than I was. And I could understand that. But I didn't be running getting you no know, water and propping your head up and all like that. Boyfriends and girlfriends will do that. I'm not condemning that. I'm just saying you need to choose what's best for you. And if, if I'm not best for you, you need to choose. I ain't mad. But then don't don't malign, malign my name and run me down. Because I'm a shepherd. Which means that I'm a sheep herd. I love my sheep. And I'll come to your house. I'll preach. I pray, I serve communion, and then I'm gonna get up and leave. I've been doing this all my life. Some hospitals I didn't go to because I'm a minister at three of the major hospitals. And they write us letters or call us and say, it's not a good time for you to visit because of the pandemic. A pandemic, whatever they call it. Amen? Amen. A relationship will stop a lot of people from going to the hospital. You cannot get healed sometimes from your children if y'all have discourse all the time. Back and forth. Fussing, nodding. That's not an element for healing. The tree has to be sown, planted in an environment that takes into consideration this tree is going to need space to go deep, to go wide, and to go high. And God did not sow a tree to carry a couple of apples. God did not save you to have a couple people in your life. I've seen mothers possessive of daughters because they ain't got nobody else. So they're jealous of their daughter interacting with anybody else because they're possessive of the daughter when there's no need. They need all kind of daughters. I got all kind of daughters and sons. I got I, I adopted grandchildren. I got a lot of my babies running up here. I got everybody. We are family. Amen. They're homes I used to stay in. And Sister Roper's house was one of the major houses where I went. I ain't go back down there to see George. I went to see Miss Blanche. That red ham. Go down there and she cook and we be playing Uno and I mean people just came. We went all over. We went to Bishop Davis' house one time. We stayed up all night. All night. Eating them little small fish. Caught out the pond. Didn't get them. The fish wasn't big as your hand. We said, shoot, we ain't got nothing that much. We didn't cook them and eat them. Full of bones. Hallelujah. Relationship. Somebody you can call, somebody you can talk to, somebody you can fellowship. I have so many people I can contact. I, can, I deal with the Jacksons. I can deal with just about everybody. All of you. You're not just my kids, my children, my family. You're my friends. And then you say, well, I got a bunch of family people. Let me tell you something. You need somebody else. Need somebody. I tell my daughter this. I said, you don't need a handful of acquaintances. You're a bishop. Mm -hmm. You need a lot of people. You need a lot of people. And you need to show them honesty and integrity and squareness and fairness and humility and so forth. You don't want to be hanging on that big old tree by yourself. I like to see apples bunched together. 
One apple way down there hanging another way up there. Man, look at the distance. We need to cluster ourselves together at this hour. Not only do I beg and crave for the church to have interrelationships with the members. That's the first and foremost, is that you build something other than a Tuesday and Sunday relationship. Everybody's preoccupied in what they do until we don't have time for each other until a certain time. And then we rush away because we have other agendas. This is not our agenda. This is not our major. This is not my wife. This is not my husband. The church is not my trophy. It's not my goal. This is a preliminary thing that I do. I have other main events in my life. And it stems from making money, career, etc. Et I know everybody. And I need everybody I know and I need some more people. And I ask the Lord, if you give me back my preaching strength, the month of August is going to be a time of prayer where I'm going after the listening audience that's outside of this church. Mm -hmm. A lot of the material that the people have been listening to over the radio and Facebook is trash. And I'm the leader of it because what I've allowed is the people to take what they want and put out there what they want. And sometimes they miss the essence. They don't know how to splice what doesn't make sense and just put out for 15 minutes something that makes sense. But they just play everything. When in every sermon there's a highlight. There's a moment you say, this footage needs to be ran or broadcast. So we don't have that kind of intermediary assistance so that we produce better material that attracts and that meets needs. So for instance, if I'm here and I'm just saying something to the people, to you in how they record it and put it out and it's not even for those people. They don't know how to differentiate or distinguish. And I'm not saying that to hurt anybody. I'm saying it because it hinders ministry and we need to fix that. Yeah. Thank you, Jesus. I close with the word of God saying, be like a tree. Planted by the rivers of water. Go ahead, read that. Oh, we're going to read that out. Amen. Blessed is the man that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor standeth in the way of sinners, nor sitteth, seeketh the scornful. But his delight is in the law of the Lord. In his law doth he meditate day and night. And he shall be like a tree. He shall be like a tree. <clears throat> Planted by the rivers of water. You ain't got to go nowhere to get no drink. You don't have to go somewhere to quench your thirst. You're going to be planted. And where you're planted is going to have your supply. He will pre-supply what you need before you need it. When that tree was still in the ground, the seed unseen, the water was there for it, waiting on it. Look at somebody and say, God got stuff waiting on you. But you got to grow up. Come on, you got to grow up. You got to leave the seed stage and the stem stage and develop into a tree. A tree that bear fruit 
in this season. Amen. Now the owner of the vineyard come in and he didn't see any fruit. He saw trees. But there was no harvest. So he said, well, cut it down. Why do you allow to occupy the ground when it's not productive? Cut all this, all this stuff down. But the husband man said, leave it alone another year. What was he asking for? The next season. This is our season. Seasons are quantity. You have four quarters. One of those quarters, three, you know, is your season. Season of sowing and reaping what you sow. There are months that afford that, allow for that. To leave it alone, give it another year. Let me dig around and let's see what it's going to do. Amen. Praise God. So I want you to envision before I pray a tree with just one fruit on it. A minister with no attachment, no relationship to any of the members in the church. But he gets up in the pulpit and tells them how to live. <laughs> He's going to preach Christ's doctrine to them. He never calls them on the phone and never... Have don't, don't see him in the hospital. Don't go to court with him. We don't want to stand right here and tell you how that. Mm -hmm. We need to be done with, away with that. That's hypocrisy. That's hypocrisy on his eyes left. Don't tell me. Show me. Don't tell me about love. Show me love. Amen. Glory to God. Anybody that talk to you when you're available, you're here. Thank you, Jesus. Richard Price said when he was in prison, he met a man who was a mass murderer. So he went into a house and he killed everybody in the house. Come to remind me of Hilda Darst. Richard Price said he asked the man, said, did you kill everybody in the house? Why did you do that? He said, they were home. <laughs> we have to learn that charity first begins at home. Then it spread it abroad. You have to build your strength and your relationships within the church. Programs and all these little things that leaders are planning to do and have don't work if you haven't, it doesn't work good if you haven't had a previous relationship. <clears throat> in spite of the importance, and there's a tremendous importance that God has in Bishop Sonia Renee, because she's an associate of mine and she covers so many areas. Sometimes I forget and come to find out she's already taken care of it. Amen. She's just in the day. But if Bishop Renee didn't get up and ask you for anything, you would give it to me anyway. Because my works is among you. You know my work. She's not telling you I've done something or I am something or I'm doing something that I'm not. You know it. My works are with you. And it have been down through the years. Many of us have been working together. You know my faithfulness. You know my steadfastness, my tenacity. People don't have to tell you that. I'm your shepherd and you know me and I know you. Don't nobody have to come in and say, and most ministers come in and say, Bishop love his memory. But they don't have to say that. You know that. You already know that. We are a family church. And a family church has to get its characteristics from <clears throat> the leader. And 
that's why I plead with you <clears throat> to tighten up, to fill the gaps with one another. Take your time. Don't rush out the door until you call. Where you going? Sunday. Take your time, man. Somebody how they feel. When can we have lunch again? Amen. Thank you, Jesus. And I tell ministers and speakers and teachers, you want somebody to say amen to you. It's hard to say man when you don't know the person. Amen. Search her. It doesn't matter if Bishop Renee never has another thing for me. There are people that's going to give to me anyway. Amen. Because you know the shepherd is worthy of his hand. The servant, the workman, whatever. And I work, and I don't work to be seen. I work because I've been called to do that. For sure. And there are those who have blessed me anyhow and have done it and have been doing it down through the years. Oh, yeah. And I want to thank you for your generosity, but I want to say you won't regret sowing in me. Many people who are standing up now feeling she was remembered that I picked out people who were going to be millionaires. If you were going to look, the forms are still there. If you were look, they became vast holders and owners, and they possessed a great deal of property. Whether they utilize it or not, God made properties available in some kind. Sold them or whatever they wanted to do with them, but that was their choice. I prophesied to six people. I said, because I'm going to come to a place where we cannot live off of the regular offering. Can't pay insurance, mortgages, whatever, upkeep from a church offering. I'm going to have to seed into you and you're going to have to seed back. And I've seeded into people. And I have sons and daughters in this place who are victims of my mouth. I prophesied I'd come to pass and they walked up and gave me 5,000, 10,000. Well, they couldn't give it if they didn't get it. And the bishop was saying, well, you know, like I gave that and blah, 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 blah. I ain't listening to that. Because he's a millionaire. He just got to learn how to manage. You can't have that much. God can't trust you with that much. And you not be somebody. You got a bunch of cars. You a car dealership. You ain't no car dealership with one car in the yard. This is all I got, this one car. No, man. I want to see a lot of cars. I want to go where they got a lot of them. I may not buy them all, but I just want to see that they got more than one car. God is not going to give a person where he is now that kind of trust without the ability to be able to get money. Because not only am I giving money, I have the ability to attract money. Because it takes money to run a business. It takes money to run a church. That's a business. Hallelujah. And there's some people who moved into property, moved into buildings, and they're making investments, saving a tax. But don't worry about that. This too will pass. What Satan wants to do is discourage you from the next level. So you come to the first level, he will make sure you don't come to the next level because every level makes it easy for you to obey God. He don't want it to get so it's easy for you to do what God tells you to do. He wants it to be a struggle all the time. God bless you. Will you join with me to pray for those who are viewing? Amen. 
through the facility of streaming and Facebook. I've certainly enjoyed this time in the Word. Have you? Amen. Will you hook up with somebody and let me, amen, get strength or draw strength with me to pray for my listening and viewing audience around the world. I want to pray for Brother Gilbert that's in Africa that would just call me. We want you to know that we love you, brother, and our prayers are for you and yours. And to those of you who've connected to us through the stream and Facebook, and even by way of radio, we pray that God intervene for you, that God meets you during your time of need, and release special things that will help you in a special way. And if the Lord should put into your heart to send us an offering to share with us, Let's simply send it to Bishop Walter Pierce, Jr., P.O. Box 1026, Bath, like you take a bath. Amen. South Carolina, 29816. God bless you until next time. Bye-bye. Y'all give God a praise.